Hopefully everyone is seeing the screen that I'm now sharing. The executive directors at Hoover Soccer Club and at Vestavia Hills Soccer Club wanted to provide a higher level of play and of development for soccer players in this community. They decided to partner together to form Hoover Vestavia Soccer or HVS. HVS brings together serious soccer players with the best coaches in the state, along with great facilities to provide an elite level of development. In our first year of existence, we competed in the National Premier League for both boys and girls. As you can see with my screen sharing, for 2021, HVS will have first and second teams for boys in the U13 through U19 age groups. We will have one team in the U12 age group. For girls, we will have one team in each age group, U12 through U19. U12 teams are listed as pre-MLS and pre-DPL because they will play some league games, but there's not an official league championship in this age group in our leagues. Hoover Soccer Club and Vestavia Hills Soccer Club will continue to offer teams in all of these age groups and others. HVS offers the top players the opportunity to train with other serious players, along with the best coaches, and then to compete against other elite level clubs around the Southeast. Because of the success of our program, we've been invited to play in MLS Next for our top boys team and the Development Players League or DPL for our girls. Our second teams on the boys side will play in the National Premier League. MLS Next is the top league for boys in the nation. It's run by Major League Soccer, and we are the only club in the state that has been invited to play at this level. It means that our teams will now compete with professional clubs like Atlanta United, Nashville SC, and other top academies. This league runs for 10 months, and so high school age players will be asked to skip playing with their schools. There are some exceptions allowed to this, but this is the commitment that's needed from most of the players choosing to play at this level of competition. The NPL for boys and the DPL for girls play fall and winter, but will not conflict with the high school season. For players who don't make an HVS team, both Hoover Soccer Club and Vestavia Hills Soccer Club will continue to offer teams that play in the state league at both the division one and division two levels. Each club will also continue to offer their current rec programs. I'm going to ask the HVS Director of Operations, Luke Whittle, to talk a little bit about travel and practice expectations for our teams. Luke, are you there? We don't hear you. Well, I think maybe we've lost Luke. Sorry about that. Am I on right now? Now we hear you, Luke. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. And I just wanted to say that, you know, I appreciate everybody spending some time with us and getting to know what our clubs have to offer. Um, with MLS Next, obviously the commitment level is higher, the quality of soccer, the environment is obviously higher with the DPL with the girls, it's also a little bit higher. So with that, to prepare our teams to play at this level, obviously the level of training is expected to uh, be a little higher. And obviously the competition will obviously push us and demand that we actually practice a little bit more. Uh, for MLS next teams, U13 through U19, those teams will train four times a week. The U12s will train three times a week. Basically that means four practices and one game with five soccer events per week with two days off. The boys NPL teams practice three times per week with two games uh, each weekend for five soccer events per the week with two days off. 
Many of the MPL players will be offered optional training with our MLS Next Teams one day a week. And that will also be available for Hoover Soccer Club players and Vestavial Soccer players that, you know, can be invited to train with MPL teams uh, throughout the season uh, as well. The girls DPL will practice three times a week with two games each weekend for five soccer events per week. Uh, are you 12 or pre uh, MLS and pre DPL will practice three times a week with one game per week on average. Uh, practices will start right now uh, in early August and games will begin in early September as we get the schedule over the summer. Practice locations, we have not been finalized just yet, uh, but it's something we're working on. Uh, and we expect that half the teams will practice uh, at Liberty Park and Shack, and uh, the other half will practice in Hoover at the Met or River Chase uh, soccer fields like we had this past year with um, the NPL. Um, as you can see from the next slides uh, that Mike is putting up, you can see what the travel commitment will be and how we'll play our games for both the MLS, uh, NPL, and DPL. Half the games will be played at home, which is our goal, and the other half will be played on the road. While there's some more travel in all three leagues uh, versus the state league, it is almost about two long trips per season, uh, which is a little bit different as most of the away games will be in Atlanta and most HSC club and VHSC teams do some tournaments. So there's a lot of comparability there. Uh, we'll also possibly look at some neutral sites like we did this past year, in the MPL to limit some of the travel or to cut down on some of those uh, uh, long mm -hmm. trips as well. So that will be looked at and that will be updated uh, as the uh, season progresses this summer. Um, all HVS teams will also play in a few showcase events sponsored by each of the leagues. Uh, we mm -hmm. expect at least one winter showcase uh, in each league with and one summer showcase for the MLS Next teams. And DPL and MLS Next will also have at least one regional showcase event. And then we'll also look at for based on everyone's schedule and travel doing one possible showcase. Okay, back to you, Mike. Thank you, Luke. I thought you might also like to know who will be coaching the HVS teams this fall or starting this fall. Uh, all of our MLS Next coaches have played professionally or with a national team. Many of our other coaches have also played professionally with national teams or at the college level. HVS will also be offering some added benefits to our players. We will provide goalkeeper training at least two nights per week for our teams. We provide college liaisons for all of our high school age players. That's essentially extra help with the college recruiting process. We provide a college night symposium, teaching our players about the recruiting process and how to be successful in finding the right college. We provide Monday night symposiums that will cover strength training, sports nutrition, sports psychology, and other topics. We also provide college coach training. We will have various college coaches lead training with our older teams to help expose our players to the expectations of college soccer and college coaches. Before we start answering some of the questions that are popping up in the chat section, uh, I'm going to ask both Tomas Fox and Rocky Harmon to say a few words. So Tomas, uh, I'll throw it over to you first. Thank you, Mike. Good night, everyone. It's a, a real pleasure to be tonight uh, talking about all the different alternatives that we have to offer in our community. Uh, my name is Thomas Fox. I'm the executive director for Hoover Soccer Club. Um, I also the executive director of Hoover Stereo with Rocky Harmon. Uh, you have here some information in, in this meeting. Uh, it's super important that we remark uh, the Hoover Soccer Club and Vestavia Hill Soccer Club will still offering the programs that make us clubs what we are today. 
our Division One and our Division Two teams at the age of 13 and 19 is the call, is our pump for our club. Uh, our commitment towards all the families that they continue playing Division One and Division Two. We wanted to let you know that we are welcome everybody with open arms and we will continue offering the product and we will continue giving you the commitment that your kids deserve. One of the big reasons because we have formed Hoover and Vesteria Soccer was because our community was in a big need to give a platform at home to those players who are looking to have a different level of competition that we didn't have in our state. We have many case, cases in both clubs where our kids in the community, in order to reach that level that they are trying to reach, they have to go to Dallas, Houston, as many of you might know, Chris Richards, who after playing in those clubs had the opportunity to be playing in Germany, one of the best leagues in the, in, in the world uh, for Bayern Munich, uh, transfer now in a long for another division one in Germany. It was a need that everybody needed to have this opportunity and it's a great pleasure now to have this fantastic group of players to offer all the levels for both clubs, but now also being super, super excited to continue offering and making sure that everybody knows that our Division One and Division Two teams will still be offering in both clubs in Juan and Vestelia. So we hope that everybody had a great opportunity to see all the options. Now we can provide at home our very best players opportunities for training in the best level that they need. And this is something that not just the people who's been working for HBS, but all the parents and players should be super proud and uh, super excited about what is coming next. So thank you, Mike, for putting this meeting for everybody. Thank you, Luke, Rocky. Thank you, all the parents and coaches. And we hope that you guys have a, a very good season coming next. And anything we can help, please don't hesitate in reaching out. Thank you, Tomas. I'm going to toss it over to Rocky Horn. Thanks, Mike. Can everybody hear me? All righty. Um, thank you, Tomas. I'd like to thank Tomas. I'd like to thank Mike. I'd like to thank uh, Marissa. Uh, Frank Hernandez, I believe, is on the call. Frank, you can give us a wave. Uh, he's my boss. Uh, without those guys forward thinking, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight. Uh, you might not know this, but we are six days away from our one-year anniversary. Uh, we put the press release out on April 27th, a year ago, and through COVID and uh, tryouts and all the other stuff, uh, we couldn't be happier with the way things have turned out. And now it's time to go from strength to strength. And by getting awarded MLS Next, that allows us to give us uh, two different levels on the boys' side. Uh, DPL will be a much more organized and recognized league on the girls' side. Uh, so we're excited to take the step forward with all three programs and adding three more boys' teams and uh, hopefully uh, making everybody as happy as they were when we got the evaluations midseason. Uh, those evaluations will be going back out again this spring and please give us your feedback so we can try and get better every day, which I think uh, all, uh, all the staff uh, here at the club is trying to do. Uh, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight and uh, I'll turn it back over to Mike so we can get these questions answered and let everybody get out of here. Thank you, Rocky. So we do have lots of questions that are popping up. Um, we're going to do our best to scroll through and answer them. Please feel free to keep adding more questions to the chat section, and we'll do our best to get to every one of them tonight. So um, I'm going to start with the first one that I'm seeing. Why is there U12 in MLS next? I believe the website said it starts at U13. So the answer to that question is the U12s, are pre-MLS Next and on the girls' side, pre-DPL. They will play some games against MLS Next clubs and DPL clubs, but there is not a league championship to win in that age group. And so they're not an official member of that league at that age group, but they will play some of the partner clubs within the league. Next question that I see also relates to that age group. Will the U12 pre-MLS next team 
play 9v9 or 11v11? Great question. Uh, the answer is that it will mostly play 9v9. Uh, and there are lots of teams in this age group that play 11v11. But the truth of the matter is players develop better at this age in the 9v9 environment. Uh, it's our club's belief that in 9v9, the kids are touching the ball more often. They're enjoying the sport more. It's more of a skill development game rather than a sheer fitness exercise for an 11 year old to be trying to play a game on a field that's 120 yards long and 75 yards wide. We do play some games 11 v 11, especially towards the end of the year. So those players can start to transition to the big field, which they will do when they're in the U13 age group. Uh, but overall, they will be playing 9v9. What is the difference between MLS Next and NPL? So this year, our top boys teams and our girls teams played in the NPL, the National Premier League. It's an excellent league. But MLS Next is the absolute top league in all of North America. It is similar to what used to be called the Development Academy, but this is run by Major League Soccer, the top level of professional soccer in the United States. And so the league is all of the MLS academies, their youth development projects for their pro teams, and some clubs that they have selected to compete with them to help develop the next generation of college players, professional players, and potentially future national team players. And so the biggest difference between the two leagues is simply the level of play. The MLS Next is far and away the most competitive league in the country. The NPL is very good, but not quite at that level. The travel, as you saw earlier on the map of our leagues, uh, is relatively similar clubs in the same areas, many of the same clubs, just as we are having a first team in MLS next and a second team playing in the NPL. Many of the other clubs are doing the exact same thing. So the travel map looks the same, but it's the level of competition that's different between these two leagues. Can a player who's currently on a Vestavia Hills team or a Hoover soccer club team try for HVS for the fall? The answer is absolutely yes. Any player from either club and even clubs outside of our parent clubs are welcome to try out. Our tryouts for HVS are on May 15th and 16th. If you go to hoovervestaviasoccer.com, you can register for tryouts. We also have an ID date on May 9th that you can register for. The ID date is simply an opportunity to train with our current players and coaches to get a little bit more comfortable, to be in the environment that you'll be in for tryouts. And so you might call it a pre-tryout, but really it's an opportunity to practice and play with the same players and coaches that will be at the tryouts a week later. Let me scroll through here just a little bit more. Is there a chance that the MLS and NPL teams in each age group will be fielded by completely separate rosters? Or could some groups uh, have one team represent both leagues? These will be two completely separate teams. No team will compete in both leagues. Uh, our first teams or top team or however you want to describe it will play in MLS next and no other league, and our second teams will play in the NPL and no other league. Great question here about travel. For teams that are playing uh, two weekend games, how will they be organized? Will it be home and away on the same weekend or two away or two at home? Uh, and how far will we will we be expected to drop? 
So one of the reasons we put the maps up on the screen a little bit earlier was so you could see the travel. Uh, the farthest trips that we would take would be North or South Carolina, um, at least in the league play for all of our teams. Showcases, we don't know the locations for each league showcase yet. That could be Florida, that could be Texas, that could be Birmingham. We just don't know that yet. Um, but the league games will all be North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and in the case of MLS Next, uh, we expect uh, Nashville SC, uh, the MLS Academy, to be our partner club, which would mean we will make a trip up to Nashville to play as well. Um, in all the leagues, um, the majority of games, if there's two, will be two away or two home on the same weekend. There can be some exceptions. This past year with COVID and games sometimes being postponed or canceled, uh, the makeup games sometimes be, did become one home and one away, but the expected league schedule, if things don't get postponed or delayed uh, due to COVID, would be either a road trip on the weekend or two home games. Great question here. Is it one tryout for HVS? HSC and VHSC, and then the athlete is offered a placement, or is it different to that? Um, and so um, it's a really simple question. There is an HVS tryout for the HVS teams. Then players can try out for Hoover Soccer Club or Vestavia Hills Soccer Club just afterwards. So the HVS tryouts for our two teams in each age group for boys and one team in each age group for girls is May 15th and 16th. And just so I don't misspeak, uh, I'm going to toss it back to Rocky Harmon and Tomas Fox to give us the dates for each individual club. Rocky, why don't you go first? You're still muted, Rocky. I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, our tryouts will be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, directly uh, following the HVS tryouts. And all the HVS kids will know if they made an HVS team or not by that Sunday night. So everybody will know to go back to Hoover or to Vestavia to try out the following Monday. Perfect. Thank you. And Tomas for Hoover. The same information with a different accent, of course. <laughs> and we're going to have right after the Monday, May 17th, is where we start with a tryout for our classic Hoover and Bestavia clubs. So we're going to make sure that everybody has this information for the people in Hoover Soccer Club. We're going to be having individual meetings with each team, making sure that everybody knows about these dates again. So... May 17th will be the day that we start with the club tryouts, let's say. Perfect. Thank you. Next question that I see, is there an anticipated date for fall camp? Great question. We expect to begin camp with each team for HVS on August 2nd. And we expect league games to begin at the beginning of September. We do not have the exact league schedules yet, so we don't know exactly when our first games will be played, but we do know that we will begin practice the week of August 2nd and then start playing some exhibition games before getting into our league schedules starting early in September. How do these changes fit into players wanting to play on their high school teams? Is it possible to do both? So great question. For girls playing in the DPL, the DPL ends in January, and so it does not conflict with high school soccer for girls. The NPL ends the season in January, and so it does not conflict with high school soccer for boys. 
Major League Soccer next, MLS next, is a 10-month season starting in September and going through May with national playoffs in May and early June. And so it absolutely does conflict with high school soccer. Players wanting to play on MLS Next teams will be asked to forego high school soccer. That's one of the reasons why we have both MLS Next teams and NPL teams on the boys' side, so that we can offer an option for those players that don't want to play high school and a different option for those that do. There are a few exceptions to the rules that will allow some players to miss uh, the end of the MLS next season and play high school soccer, but the league continues all the way through. Uh, and so other than a few exceptions on each team, the majority of our players will be expected to skip high school soccer if they're playing on an MLS next team. Just going to scroll through a few more here. Great question here. Do teams travel to the same tournaments such as 2009 and 2005 girls or are schedules completely separate? So each league, all of the age groups from U13 through U19 will play at the same location on the same weekends. So if we're hosting a match, our 2009 girls and our 2005 girls would both be at home. If we're traveling to a team in Atlanta to play, both and all would travel to Atlanta on the same day for games. You used the word in this question, it says tournaments. And it is true that we may play in some tournaments. Um, and so tournaments are typically team by team as opposed to club wide. So all of our teams will travel to the same place for league games, but not necessarily for a tournament that they might be playing in. Uh, the best example I could give is if our older girls went to the Disney showcase in mid January, um, it doesn't have a section for the younger girls teams. It starts at high school age, 2006 and older. So obviously uh, the younger teams would not make a trip like that. Next question that I see are how are numbers for rosters determined? Is it set by the governing body for each level or determined by each coach? Uh, so again, lots of really good questions here. Um, the answer to that is each of the leagues restricts the roster on game day to 18 players, but none of the leagues restrict the number of players that can be rostered in an age group. So typically we will have about 18 players on a roster as selected by the head coach of that team, but there could be one or two less or one or two more depending on the needs of the team, as well as depending on uh, the commitment at MLS next level, for instance, where perhaps one or two players um, for various reasons would be dropping off in January. And so perhaps there would be 19 or 20 on that roster uh, to ensure that there is enough players to play through the season. How do the team and club fees for NPL and MLS Next compare to the Division I fees from last year? I have been the director of HVS teams for the past year and do not know what the fees were for the Division I and II teams from each club. And so I'm going to toss this one back to Rocky Harmon and Tomas Fox to answer so that we have slightly more accurate information. So Tomas, if you don't mind, 
Uh, we'll start with you this time, being fair, going back and forth. Uh, can you tell us how league fees or club fees uh, are expected to compare between MLS Next, NPL, and Hoover Soccer Club? Absolutely, no problem. And of course, it's going to be different fees for the levels. The length of each season depends. So it's going to be Hoover Soccer Club. We're going to be making sure everybody knows the fees. It's going to be a difference between Division One, Division Two, NPL, and MLS Next, DPL for girls, boys. It's going to be a difference depending on the level and the ages, of course. So we're going to be making sure that everybody has that in hand before making any decisions. Thank you. Rocky, do you want to speak to Vestavia Hills Soccer Club? Yeah, our fees are basically, the Vestavia Hills Soccer Club fees would basically be the exact same as they were last year. Uh, and then I believe the DPL and NPL fees are very similar to what they were last year for HVS as well. Um, MLS Next for the U14s and above is substantially higher. Uh, they'll be going four days a week instead of three, and they'll be going 10 months instead of four months. So um, that's pretty much the, the structure, but all the fees will be, will be distributed the next few weeks here well before trials. Thank you both. The next question that I'm reading is for the girls DPL, what is required for promotion to the girls academy? Can promotion occur for just one team or is it an entire club promotion? Great question. Uh, the answer for the second question is it's a whole club. All of these leagues are club-based, not team-based. So either your club is playing in the DPL or your club is not. It's not one age group here or there. Promotion to the Girls Academy uh, is something that the Girls Academy chooses each year. Uh, the criteria, as we understand it, is essentially overall club success at the DPL level. Uh, and so our expectation is that if we want it, we will have it next year based on the success of our teams. Uh, and so the, for those that don't know, the Girls Academy is the highest level league in the United States, similar to MLS Next. And in fact, there's a partnership between those two leagues in how they operate. And we have had discussions with the Girls Academy um, and uh, we were very excited to accept uh, membership into the DPL, but we do uh, like to grow and improve every year. And our hope, and I'll even say expectation, is uh, that based on our success this coming year, uh, that a year later we would be playing in the Girls Academy. Let me scroll some more. Will practices still be at Hoover and Liberty Park Fields? Um, so great question. And the answer is we expect to have some teams training on Hoover Fields. It might be Hoover Met Turf. It might be River Chase. Um, it also might be Liberty Park or it might be Shack. Uh, and so those are the four main complexes that our teams trained on this past year. And we expect it to be similar. Which teams will be playing or practicing at which locations has not yet been determined. Um, and so uh, we do expect there to be a balance between those facilities and between Hoover and Vestavia, but we do not know which teams at which fields at this time. I see a question asking to clarify the length of the season for 2009 girls. Uh, and it will be the same for the 2009 girls and the 2009 boys playing in the NPL. Both of those will start league games in September and both will finish playing in January. Exactly what date in January, we don't know. Uh, because uh, we don't have uh, 
the, uh, the schedules yet. And I'm sorry, that's not actually accurate information. So let me redo that. Uh, I have things upside down in my head. The 2009 boys and girls, because they are not playing high school soccer, will play September through December or early January, have a small break of a few weeks, and then resume early February through the end of April is the expectation. Again, I can't say exactly what the dates will be because we don't have the league schedule, but 2010s, 2009s will both play essentially that eight-month schedule, four months in the fall, four months uh, in the spring. Sorry for the confusion there. Do 2008 birth dates fall into U12 or U13? For next year, the 2008s are U13. Let me scroll through some more, pardon the pause. A question just asking to clarify the practice schedule for the 08 girls, since Luke Whittle, our director of operations uh, and the director of soccer for Vestavia Hills Soccer Club, he will be coaching that team. So I'm gonna let you answer that question, Luke. Can you clarify the practice schedule for 08 girls? Uh, as of now, the plan is for them to train uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like we have currently scheduled um, because we like that training model uh, coming off a weekend and then still have the extra training session on a Monday. So that's the plan going forward for the 2008 girls. Thank you, Luke. Next question I'm seeing is if someone does not make the MLS team, will they be put on an NPL team automatically or is that another tryout? It's not another tryout. Both teams will be selected from the same tryout. But we do not know exactly how many players will show up to tryouts. Last year on the boys' side, uh, we had um, in some age groups as many as 60 players show up. And so we will not have 60 roster spots available in any age group assuming each team will be approximately 18 players, then 18 players would be selected to the MLS next team. 18 players would be selected approximately to the NPL team. And then remaining players from that tryout would then be asked to go to the Hoover or Vestavia Hills tryouts coming up the next day. Who will the goalkeeper coaches be? Great question. We have two goalkeeping coaches working with our club. We have Joel Wallace, who is along with our goalkeeping coach. He is the goalkeeping coach for UAB men's soccer. And we have Taylor Holmberg working with us, who is the goalkeeping coach at Birmingham Southern College. There's a question here, uh, which I don't know that this person actually expected me to read it out loud because I can tell that they asked it in a joking way, but I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, the question says, will there be an RV purchased uh, as part of team fees to transport the team? Uh, just kidding, it says. Uh, it's actually something we're looking into, not an RV, but because six age groups will travel to the same location for games. We are looking at the option of whether it's van rentals or bus rentals so that parents do not have to make the trip each time. This past year, COVID protocols prevented us from doing any such thing. But if protocols allow it, if it's something that parents would like, it is definitely something that we are exploring for this coming season. 
Thank you for both the joke and the suggestion because they're both excellent. Let me scroll a little bit more. Lots of questions here. We started with just three or four and we're up around 35. So give me just a moment. So there's a question, is there an MLS league for girls? And the answer to that is there's not a league run by Major League Soccer, but Major League Soccer is working with what's called the Girls Academy to provide top level competition on the girls side. And we are hoping to play at that level with our girls next year, but we do need to prove ourselves in the DPL in order to get there. Next question, does the head coach select the team or is it selected by a committee? The answer is the head coach is ultimately in charge of selecting the players for his or her team. With the tryout schedule as it typically is, where you might have 30, 40, 50 players uh, at the same tryout, we certainly will have a number of coaches involved helping that head coach to uh, to watch players, evaluate players, and help make selections. But ultimately, it is the head coach of each team who selects the players for their roster. I'm so glad someone asked this next question because I meant to talk about it earlier and did not. What type of financial help is available for players that cannot afford the fees? Are there restrictions on who can apply for these funds? Great question. Unfortunately, soccer in the United States can be very expensive, especially when you take into account not only the club fees, but travel expenses, perhaps time away from work to drive a child to practice or games. Uh, and we do know that that is a real challenge for many people in our community. I'm really proud that HVS offers an enormous amount of financial aid more than any club I'm aware of in the state, and anyone can apply for financial aid. Uh, there will be a link on the website when our financial aid committee is ready where people can apply for financial aid. There's a committee that does evaluate those applications and then uh, gives uh, financial aid based on that. So uh, it is available. There is what I consider an extraordinary amount, and there are no restrictions on who could apply for it. Thank you for asking that question. Hey, Mike, that uh, financial aid uh, applications opens uh, May 1st. Thank you very much, Rocky. I'm scrolling through, please excuse me. Some of the questions I have already answered or one of us have answered. How many 2010 pre-MLS or pre-DPL teams will there be? The answer is one in each gender. There will be one boys 2010 team. There will be one girls 2010 team. Will all of this information be distributed in writing in addition to the Zoom meeting so that we have adequate time to look at all options without time constraints or streaming issues? Uh, I absolutely understand the streaming issues. Uh, Zoom has been a challenge for many of us over the past few months. Uh, so the answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, most of it if it's not already on our website, will be on the website over the next day or two. Uh, we will not be distributing paper forms of it, but everything uh, that we've gone over will be posted on our website. Uh, and again, if it's not already up, it will be over the next couple of days. So please check hoovervestaviasoccer.com for any information uh, that you didn't get tonight. 
outside of camps, is there a summer league for players? So the answer to that is um, once our teams are selected, there will be some optional training opportunities for our players. Um, that will be something that's offered at no cost to players already selected to our teams. Um, so it won't be a camp, uh, but there will be some training opportunities for players after tryouts have been selected, but that will be very optional, not expected, something we simply want to provide for players who are in the area and want to continue to keep their touch and their fitness levels high. So great question here. Is there an option for girls U12 or older to play soccer at a level that does not require trying out? And so I don't know the answer to that question because all HVS teams are selected through a tryout process. Uh, so I'm going to toss that one back to Rocky and Tomas. Well, I'm not quite yeah. sure of the question, but we have, we, same. Do have, we do have some current players that let us know that uh, they've got to go to a wedding this summer and they're going to miss tryouts and they could get evaluated ahead of time. In which case, sometimes we have them come to uh, the ID camp and take a look at them there. Uh, sometimes we just take their body of work that was, so we've known them for the whole season and we've seen them play 25 games. So we know uh, the applicable place to place them and they might get put on a team even though they didn't come to tryouts. Um, but those are really the only uh, examples or instances I can think of that people make a team uh, without trying out. So thank you, Rocky. And I see that uh, Tomas is shaking his head yes to all of that. So I'm pretty confident his answer was going to be the same. I actually took the question a slightly different way. Uh, and so I'll, I'll clarify it in both directions. Um, so if someone can't be at tryouts, there are other ways to make the team. If we've known that player, perhaps they're on a team uh, at one of our clubs and our coaches are uh, knowing who they are, that that is possible for someone who can't be there. They can also come to the HVS ID date on May 9th as a way for us to get to know them. And we do in fact have a pre-tryout camp that is a third opportunity to let our coaches know who they are before the actual tryouts. So if that's what the question was, what if we can't be there on those dates? There are opportunities right. to make all of the teams at all of the clubs through other methods. I took the question as if someone just isn't comfortable in a tryout setting, are there rec teams that are available where everybody gets selected uh, to a team in that age group? And I know that that is the case in the younger age groups, but I don't know if that's true in any of the older age groups. And so Rocky or Tomas, if you would clarify, are there, uh, let's just say U12, U13, U14 teams uh, or leagues within the club that nobody needs to try out? Absolutely, yes. If recreational level, you sign up for your age groups and we accommodate you in a team. If you have a request for a special coach, that's what we do in both clubs, they say. Perfect. So hopefully we've answered that question uh, in either way that it was intended. There are recreational opportunities at both clubs where every player who's interested in playing can have a team. So I see a question here, and then I am going to cut us off in just a few minutes. Uh, there are so many questions uh, that there's, it, there just isn't time for us to answer them all, uh, but we will try and answer just one or two more. And then we certainly will be happy to answer more questions on an individual basis. Uh, will the athlete be notified on the field if they have made a roster or do they have to wait for posting? Great question. For HVS teams, players that come to tryouts will be notified at the end of tryouts. So some players might be notified at the end of the first day. Some might be notified at the end of the second day. 
but everybody will know by the end of our tryouts. You won't have to wait a few days and not know whether you need to go to either Hoover Soccer Club or Vestavia Hills Soccer Club to try out. Yeah, next question is a very good one as well. Uh, since there will be new leagues, both for the boys and the girls, do we have to buy new uniforms again? Absolutely not. Uh, typically, the uniform package will be in a two-year rotation. Since we've existed for just one year, we will not be buying new uniforms this coming year. We will be perhaps uh, either removing or adding a patch, uh, depending on which league a player is now playing it. So on the girls' side, uh, all of our girls will now be playing in the DPL. Uh, we have uh, the ability to remove the NPL patches uh, and replace it with the DPL patch. On the boys' side, if a player is playing on our NPL team, there's no need to change anything, not even the patch. But if a player is selected for our MLS Next team, then the patch would be removed and then replaced with an MLS Next patch. So uh, there will not be new uniforms needed to be purchased for current players. Should we go ahead and register for HSC and or VHSC tryouts just in case? And while I know that uh, Rocky and Tomas could answer that for you. I will simply say absolutely yes. There's no harm in registering for any of the clubs and that way we know who you are uh, and we can make sure that you get all updates about tryouts and you don't miss anything. And so it would be quite wise to register for HVS as well as VHSC and HSC tryouts. There's no cost to registering. And so it will allow you to get any information or updates in advance. So a question here, um, and I, I, I love it when um, people are so polite. Uh, I know you said girls 2008 is U13. No. Are girls 2009 also U13? So thank you for being polite and asking that question. I believe what you meant is, hey, Mike, you misspoke when you said that. The 08s, the 2008s, are currently U13s, but next year, the 2009s are U13s, the 2010s are U12, the 2008s who are currently U13s will become our U14 age groups. And so I apologize for misspeaking earlier, but thank you for so politely asking that question so that I can correct it for everybody who I might have confused. Great question. Um, so last one that we'll ask here, um, and I'm going to throw this uh, back to Rocky and Tomas, uh, has HSC and VHSC selected their coaches yet? Rocky, you're not mute, go first. Uh, yeah, Vestavia Soccer Club is uh, currently got all of their coaches selected and I believe that uh, list is gonna go out this week, if not by Monday morning at the, at the latest. Thank you, Rocky. We are planning to have similar timetable. We will let you have everything done by mid next week, early next week. So everybody can start planning the rest of their life soccer wise talking. Okay, thank you both. Lots of great questions. Hopefully we've provided you with information that is useful to you. If you have more questions or we simply didn't get to your question tonight, you can contact me through either our website, 
or you can email me directly at mikegetmanhvs at gmail.com. My cell phone number is also posted on our website, and so you can find it there. Call me, text me, email me, use the uh, portal on our website to ask questions, but please don't be shy. Ask away. We want to make sure you have all the information you need so that you can make good decisions for you and for your children. Thank you all for attending. I hope it's been productive. Have a great night, and hopefully you'll get a little bit of sleep tonight. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you.